Hi everyone, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf and welcome to Foundation Fun Day. Today we are going to be trying out a brand new skin tint from Revolution Pro. This is a colour changing skin tint and you know it's the little things, it really is. <laughs> I like a little bit of magic in my life, what can I say? So this is the Revolution Pro CC Skin Tint Skin Perfector. If you are new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload two to three videos here on YouTube every single week. I love skincare, I love makeup. You'll find a variety of content here on my channel. And I also have the best subscribers in the world. So if you fancy coming and joining them, click on that subscribe button, the notification bell, hit the cheeky like button if you fancy giving me a like as well. And I'm also on Instagram. It's running across the bottom of the screen if you fancy following me over there as well. Let's do a little bit of bump on this and we'll get some on my face. So this is the Revolution Pro CC Perfecting Skin Tint. It's £12.99 in the UK. You get 40 mils worth of product, which is slightly more than the standard 30 mils. This comes in five shade adapting shades, which should blend out to suit your natural skin tone. This is supposed to give light buildable coverage, a soft focus radiant finish, which could turn into a dewy finish if you want to add the Perfecting Glow Enhancer underneath this product. Product. and also it's infused with vitamin E and glycerin. It's fragrance free, it's alcohol free, it's cruelty free, what more can I say? Let's get some on. <laughs> Okay, so I forgot to tell you that I have been really poorly recently and it showed in my skin. So my skin completely changed. It went really oily one day, one second it was seriously dry. I have some really dry flaky patches on my skin, but my skin is also slightly oilier than it would usually be. I did try and film this review about five days ago and halfway through the wear test, I decided to completely abandon the wear test and film this again on a different day because my skin just wasn't behaving as it usually would. And I thought that was a really unfair test for the skin tint. So as my skin has returned pretty much back to normal, I thought I would give it another go today. But please be warned, it's not 100% back to its usual self. Let's get some of this on, finally, again. Okay, so as per usual, I've got all of my skincare on my skin. I am absolutely plastered in SPF because it's beautiful outside. I've already done the school run today. So um, yes, my skin is definitely prepped and I've left that plenty of time to sink in before I'm applying the CC Skin Tint. So I have two shades in this. I'm gonna show you the swatches on my hand now. The light is a little bit too fair for me, but the medium is way too orangey toned. So it's way too warm tone for me and it would just make me look like an Oompa Loompa. And you know, I've just not got those Oompa Loompa vibes today. I don't feel like I could pull it off. So we're gonna use light and then oh, we're gonna bronze it up. So let me just show you the actual product on the back of my hand. So it is quite a stiff, creamy consistency and it's completely and utterly white. And let me show you what happens when you apply it to the skin. So still white. And then when you massage it in or use a brush, you can see it start to change color there and blend in to your natural skin tone. Now there are lots of different shades to choose from depending on your skin tone and how deep it is. Because, you know, these aren't miracle workers, they can only change so much. But I think that's a pretty good match, isn't it? Anyway, I'm gonna try and see how this applies with a brush. So this does work if you apply it with a brush, but, uh, I think my preference for application is actually my fingers because it really does allow you to massage this product into the skin so it's actually one with the skin rather than it sitting on the surface. So yeah, I think I prefer finger application. So I really like a sponge application. Very, very smooth, really nice and very easy. So I'm gonna leave it at that because I feel like I've built this up enough in the areas that I feel like I need a little bit more coverage. 
This has actually shocked me, the level of coverage that this actually gives. Because you would think with something that had the word tint in the title of the product, it would be very, very sheer. And actually, this is really quite buildable. I don't think I'd feel comfortable building it up any more than I already have, but I think that's a decent level of coverage. I would say a high light coverage to a low medium coverage I've got right now. As you can see, yes, it definitely is a little bit fair for my skin tone, but like I said, the medium, way too orange. So we're gonna roll with this. I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna bronze this up, apply the rest of my products, and I'll be right back. So that's the final look for today, and I think it looks really pleasant on my skin. I want to update you on a couple of details before I let you see this in natural lighting. So I don't think this is gonna be suitable for anybody with super dry, flaky skin. I don't think very many foundations or skin tints are suitable for anybody with super dry, flaky skin, but this one in particular really does cling to those flaky areas and makes them look far more noticeable than they do when you don't have any of the foundation or skin tint on. But if you just have dry skin, I have some areas of dryness on my skin and this looks absolutely fine on those areas. It's just the areas of flakiness. With regards to applying the rest of my products on top of this, even though this is not tacky to the touch, this is actually quite a pleasant product to wear because it doesn't remain tacky on the skin. The rest of my products, my bronzer and my blush, didn't blend out very well. And uh, you will probably notice this in my close-up natural lighting shots, that it's quite heavy in certain areas and you can see it's been quite difficult to apply. So what I had to do once I'd applied a tiny bit of it is spread powder over the rest of those areas so that it was easier to blend. That really was the only way of getting my bronzer and blush to blend really, really beautifully. So if you are one of those people who really doesn't like wearing powder, just tread with caution. This might not be for you, but you may have a better time at blending than I did. Like I said, my skin is not fully back to its usual self for the moment, so it may just be my skin playing up. So let me show you this up close and personal. So you can see that this is given a really nice light to medium coverage. The finish on the skin is really pleasant. Again, you can notice those really flaky areas are quite evident on the skin, but the rest of my skin looks really nice. Now, I do feel that this has some airbrushing capabilities. I actually think that this has made my pores less noticeable. And you can definitely still see that they're there because, you know, I have pores, but I don't feel like they are as evident as they would usually be with a skin tint. So that is definitely a positive for me. So at the moment, this hasn't sank into any of my fine lines, any wrinkles. It hasn't tried to move at all. It's stuck where it was. And like I said, not tacky to the touch. So I'm happy at the moment and I enjoyed applying it. I mean, it's a bit of a gimmick, isn't it? A white foundation that's color changing to your skin tone, but you know, the littlest things make me happy. So I enjoyed applying it. I thought it was nice. I think it feels nice on the skin. I'm gonna get on with the rest of my day. I will check in with you a little bit later on. This is not gonna be a long wear test because this does not claim to be long wearing, but I will give it a really good go. So I'll see you in a bit. Hi everybody, welcome back to the check-in. It has now been just shy of seven hours since I first applied the CC Skin Tint to my skin. And um, <laughs> I've had to tie my hair back. Honestly, you're lucky I'm not sat here naked. It is super warm, <laughs> it really is. This has done so well considering all of the external factors. It is seriously humid for the UK at the moment. I have walked to school and back in the humidity and the heat and the sunshine. I've been in a really hot, steamy filming room without any of the windows open with the huge studio lights in front of me, which add extra heat. And I've worn a face mask on the school run. So this has had some tough challenges. And do you know what? 
it's done really, really well. So let me zoom you in so you can have a little look for yourself. So this is obviously going to look a lot dewier than it did when I first applied the CC Skin Tint, but the skin tint has had to jump over a few hurdles today, so I am not mad at it. It's all still intact, apart from a little bit in between my brows and a little bit on the bridge of my nose where I've had my sunglasses on on the school run and it's been touching my skin and it's rubbed off a little bit. This has collected a little bit in the smile lines around my mouth and my dry areas still look flaky and dry, so that hasn't improved over time. You can also see the melasma on my forehead starting to poke through the skin tint as well, so it has worn off slightly. Now just a little bit of extra information, I have blotted this once after the school run because I, w I just looked like a drowned rat after the school run, and this blotted really well very, very little of the skin tint removed onto the blotting paper, or rather a tissue, which is what I used, because my skin doesn't generally get that oily, so I just pressed a tissue onto my skin and lifted it off, and very little of the skin tint was removed, and it still looks really, really nice. So I think this is worn really well, especially considering what it's had to deal with today. Just another little bit of information for you, just like all other foundations or skin tints, this is going to look different depending on what SPF or what primer you team it with. So if you team it with a really rich hydrating SPF or a really rich hydrating primer, it's going to look slightly dewier throughout the day. And if you team it with more of a mattifying SPF or a mattifying primer, again, it's going to look more matte throughout the day. Overall, I'm happy with it. It is a little bit gimmicky, the whole colour changing adaptability part of this skin tint, but I do quite like it. I do feel lucky, however, that one does suit my skin tone and undertone, because if I hadn't have been able to bronze this up, if I'd had to go for the medium skin tint, it would have been way too orange for my skin. So if you've tried this already and you cannot find a shade that suits you, if you love this, if you really don't like it, do let everybody know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. Spread the knowledge. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful in some way. In my opinion, this is worth a go. If you're after something that's lightweight, that will give you either light coverage or a light medium coverage if you want a little bit extra, I would say give it a crack. See what you think. <laughs> Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.